is ice cream a superfood? And if it is a superfood, why aren't we reading about it along with other so-called superfoods like kale, blueberries, yogurt, and so on? Let's get into it. Before we do, my name is Samir and I'm a hyper carnivore and I'm a health coach. I teach people to heal through changing their diet and lifestyle. And for most people, the first change that they need to think about is about eating more meat. If you're interested in learning more, there's a link below to a free ebook, which will give you some strategies for incorporating more meat into your diet. Okay, so here is the article that I wanna talk about today. Um, Nutrition science's most preposterous results. Studies show a mysterious health benefit to ice cream. Scientists don't want to talk about it. Okay. So what did I want to say about this article? I mean, the first thing to say is that it's great that The Atlantic has had this written up and is carrying it. I think it's, it's a fantastic piece that highlights some of the flaws in nutrition science. And I just want to highlight some of those flaws by reading um, some of what's in there. So this is uh, some paragraphs taken. Sorry, it's behind a paywall, so I'm not going to share it. But what it says is, uh, regarding ice cream's potential benefits, so these are it's you know the studies the studies they're talking about are all these epidemiological studies which are looking for healthy dairy products, and uh, they keep finding that ice cream is the healthiest dairy product, right? So uh, I asked experts to compare the 2014 yogurt and ice cream findings. Kevin Klatt, a nutrition scientist at UC Berkeley, said the ice cream effect was more consistent than yogurts across the studied cohorts. Deidre Tobias, an epidemiologist at Harvard, agreed with that assessment. Uh, even Dagfin Ahn, an epidemiologist at Imperial College London, said that ice cream effect was similar or slightly stronger than the one for yogurt. You know, they have various places in this text where they're trying to explain away the, the, the ice cream finding. Um, but on paper, and quoting again from the article, on paper, the yogurt and ice cream effect looked pretty similar. So there's a quote here that yogurt has approached wonder food status in recent years, but in a new study, other forms of dairy like milk and cheese did not offer the same kind of protection as yogurt. That's true that milk and cheese didn't, but ice cream did. So the first thing to say is, you know, kudos to The Atlantic for carrying this piece. I think it's, it's, a, decent, it's a decent look. Uh, but there's another thing I want to say, which is that despite being a decent look, this piece sort of, it stops too soon, right? <laughs> because if I'm a scientist, if I have a result I can't explain, right? If I put a pH piece of pH paper, so this is the kind of litmus paper you use to test the pH of a fluid, right? And I think the fluid in front of me is water, but I put the pH paper in, litmus paper in, and it comes back as highly acidic, right? Well, uh, water has a pH of seven. It should neither be acidic nor basic. It should be neutral. It shouldn't change the color of that paper. If the color changes, there are two possibilities, right? Either the water is wrong, it's not water, or the paper that I'm using is wrong. I have a flawed methodology. This is faulty paper, right? And so what I want to suggest is that if you believe that nutritional epi epidemiology works, right, if you believe that these kind of studies where you give someone a food frequency questionnaire in year one, and then you're making assessments about heart disease in year five, et cetera, you know, the kind of methodologic where you give, where you tell, ask people how many salads they eat a week and healthy people are more likely to overestimate the salad content and unhealthy uh, people are more likely to underestimate the number of salads they're having. This is all very well documented in the literature. This is the healthy user bias. If you take this seriously, and if you like the findings that blueberries are superfood and kale is a superfood and yogurt is a superfood, well, you know, I'm sorry, but then ice cream has to be a superfood too, right? Um, but if you don't take it seriously, right, or, or if, you, if you don't agree with that finding, then you have to dismiss the entire field of, of nutritional epidemiology. And I think, you know, as, as a rule, that's what we should do. What I go into in the blog post in a little bit of detail, not, not as much as I could have, is that actually... For this particular hypothesis, because it doesn't fit the healthy user bias, in other words, it's unlikely that people who are eating more ice cream, you know, identified as healthier people, right? That seems very odd to me that that might be the case. So since it actually goes against the healthy user bias, that's actually more of an argument that this hypothesis should be tested. What's going on with this ice cream signal? It doesn't make any sense. And of course, you know, when you look into it, you say, okay, what does ice cream have? Well, it's basically just sugar. And we know it's the sugar can't be doing much because, hey, there are lots of sugary foods that don't have this, that don't correlate with health, right? Many, 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 many. Or saturated fat. That's the only, basically the only two ingredients in, in ice cream, right? In traditional ice cream. So it's sugar, saturated fat. And we do know some anecdotal evidence, there's some observational evidence regarding the French paradox and so on, that saturated fat seems to have a healthier health, health signal in, in certain populations um, than many other things, right? Certainly more than sugar, right? So could we do studies on a high saturated fat, you know, and specifically, I think it's butyric acid is the 
saturated fat found in butter, but also in cream, to a lesser extent in cream. But in ice cream, I, I don't know the studies, but I'm assuming it's butyric acid. It might be stearic acid as well. These are fatty acids that in mouse studies seem to correlate with health. When you, when you inject the, these or give them high foods that are high fat with these particular fatty acids, the mice are protected from obesity, right? So I don't know if this is true or not. It's just a hypothesis. And it should be tested more than the yogurt hypothesis. By the way, the yogurt hypothesis um, has been tested so many times. But, you know, I looked at meta-analysis uh, after meta-analysis, and the yogurt finding is, is weak to non-existent, right? So in other words, what I'm saying is the yogurt hypothesis has been tested a lot more than the ice cream hypothesis. And I would say it's pretty much disproven. In other words, um, people who eat more, more yogurt, there's no reason to see that they don't, they don't tend to be on average healthier than people who eat less yogurt. That doesn't seem to be the case, right? Is yogurt healthy or not? It depends on the context. I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk about a specific food in that way. But people who eat more yogurt seem to be as healthy or you know, slightly less healthy or slightly more healthy, not st statistically different from people who don't eat yogurt. The ice cream hypothesis has never been tested. <laughs> you know, with all of these um, studies, you know, it's shown up again and again and again in all of these results. And the whole purpose of epidemiological studies like this supposedly is to generate a hypothesis this is a hypothesis that has been generated and no one has even bothered to study it. So some food for thought. Um, I think the safest thing is just to dismiss nutritional epidemiology as uh, largely a waste of time, not really telling us much of anything except that healthy people tend to eat foods that they think are healthy. Doesn't tell us about what foods are actually healthy. So again, if you want to look at what you should really be eating, evolutionary consistent human diets, probably the way to go. <laughs> so with that, I'm Samir. I'm a health coach and a PhD student. I'll see you next time.